So, uh, MTG cards are better than sports cards right now by a large margin. And it is better than MetaZoo, it's better than Flesh and Blood, which they're dropping. They're dropping, dropping, dropping. And thank goodness we played the game of Magic the Gathering. Had we been playing, had we been a sports car channel, I think I would just stop content because it would be too embarrassing, right? To give you a little bit of background, there are so many Pokemon channels, there are so many sports car channels where they tell you to buy this, buy that, and it's kind of a hype thing. And let me tell you exactly what happened. Uh, venture capital, a lot of you know money, smart money, this is hyper smart money, they started dumping money into the sports cards and Pokemon cards. And that now they're getting out because they've seen the return. They dump money in. It's kind of like when you go to the casino and you say, hey, if I can double my money, I'm going to cash out. As soon as I hit my double my money, I, I have the financial where I have the financial intelligence to not bet anymore and cash out. And that's what happened. Their, their Kobe card went from 20,000 to 40,000 and they said, you know what, I'm cashing out, we're done. We're done here, our investors are happy, we made a 2x return, we made a 4x, whatever that amount was, they cashed out because the sports card market, I mean, when you had a Luca base that is 800 and it goes up to 4,000 and now it's back to 800, somebody made 3,200 and somebody lost 3,200 as a accumulation. Now, why I love the magic market, and the magic market, you guys should learn, is actually a lot better and a lot more stable, is their big money did not buy into the magic market. It never has. I know we had the Martin Scorsese, that dude who, that farmer bro, and that was a big deal. He was supposedly going to buy Black Lotuses, it didn't happen. I know you had people pumping and dumping, um, but for the most part, you don't have multi-billion dollar companies, venture-backed companies with the sole purpose of making money. It reminds me of that Pokemon collector, uh, collectible gurus, the Logan Paul guy who sold that fake box that one time to dumb money. He has no interest in Pokemon. He doesn't love Pokemon. He doesn't play Pokemon. He only wants to make money. He's from the realm of crypto. And in crypto, money is easy. And it was easy. So what happened was they somehow, you know, Ponzi schemed a bunch of dum-dums into thinking that, oh, these cards will go up forever. No, no, as soon as the venture capital makes its 5X return, it's selling everything. It'll be the first one to sell. And then it's who's holding a bag. I learned this lesson during Pico Trade, right? Tulare Community College had more points than anyone, but he got rid of his points. Manasaur, same deal. No content creator, I mean, because the content creator creates a video saying, oh, Pico Trade is bad, no one should use it. And the content creator creates that same video a year ago, Pico Trade is awesome, everyone should use it. So they know when that video, oh, Pico Trade sucks, don't use it, is coming out, they're gonna empty out their accounts before that video, they make that video, Tolera Community Call makes that video after he empties his accounts and now what are you gonna do? You're stuck with you're, you're stuck holding the bag because you were the dum dum, right? It it truly saddens me because I know a lot of people and I do like watching their blogs and they're very interesting individuals online, but they lost a lot of money, and their subscribers lost even more money because they didn't understand what was actually going on. It was a giant Ponzi scheme. Um. I think she collects cards is figuring this out. I think she's like the only one. Every other big investor is saying, oh, we need to continue to invest. It's like, no, you idiots. Like the thing is going down, the boat, I, I see the boat, the boat is sinking. I see the water is flooding. My feet are getting wet. My ankles are getting wet. You know, I, the wa water is up here now. W what? <laughs> like, why would we still keep on the boat? We gotta get off this boat. Right? But it's, it's pretty hilarious. I think it's going to be funny because now you're going to see who's smart and who's dumb. When you are in, the, are in a bull market, everyone's smart. You know, and every stock goes up. Every magic card, when modern was first invented, it, every mo modern magic card went up. When EDH was first invented, every foil went up. Because it was super obvious. 
And any dum dum can make the predictions that these MTG finance people were so proud that they could make. Now we'll see the dip. How many people are gonna spend, you know, who, how many people buy 200,000, 200 dual lands at 200 a pop for underground tees? How many when people buy cradles at pennies on the dollars, right? I did, because I realized, wait a second, why is underground C200? This is like the lowest it's been in like many years. Even if, you know, the whole, you know, the whole uh, magic economy collapses, underground C is still underground C. Why is Card Kingdom taking away its buy list? Why is it doing this? I mean, even during the darkest of days, I had the where I ha I knew that Underground C was going to be played in EVH decks, and it was on the reserve list. So those two things alone was all I needed to know to continue to hold them. Now, should I've held all of them? Yeah, but I'm rebuilding the position. So as we speak, very interesting, right? Uh, Magic the Gathering cards were a way better invest in, investment than sports cards. I just don't know why no sports investor actually diversified from Magic cards. It seems kind of like a super obvious thing to do. <laughs> they diversified in Pokemon cards, which also tanked in price, but that's uh, neither here nor there. Bye, guys.